So I have an old Epiphone acoustic guitar. And it's got this weird little bolt on neck. As you can see. And uh, it's got a pretty weird twist in it. And I'm going to try to take that twist out. And then the top here is bellied. And I'm going to take the belly out of that. And then I'll take you through the process of all that. Okay, so here I am uh, continuing my work on this body and trying to make this little uh, belly reducer. And you see here, what I started with was actually trying to figure out what it looks like inside. And obviously you really can't do that very well. I mean, you can certainly get mirrors and put lights in there and things like that and you can see, but it doesn't really give you an accurate representation of what you're working with. So here's what I did. You can see I have lovely white painter's tape that I affixed to the top. It is a really, really low tack, um, but hasn't come off. So I guess it's working well. And it's easy to draw pencil marks as you can see. And all of these lines were used or, or were um, drawn on there using uh, rare earth magnets. And so basically what I did was I would take an earth magnet, say right here, and then I would come up underneath with the other one. And so they're stuck together on the top and I can move that rare earth magnet that way, which can help me get a draw a line on there. And so here's what I have with all the lines that are inside the guitar. And I have to say, as I'll show you in a few moments, it, it actually come out pretty darn accurate. So I'm very happy about that. But here is what I've started with, and I'm not done yet. But this here is the block that's going to go directly underneath the bridge. Um, and these angles here are cut to match that angle here and here where the X brace is. So let me put that in there and show you what that looks like. Okay, so there the block is inside and you can see I'm using a mirror um, in my light, which is kind of in the way, but it gives me the best light. And you can actually see where I knocked off those corners and gave that angle on that support block it fits uh, perfectly right up against the X-Brace and it does the same over here. So that worked really well. And, uh, and all I did was use a hand plane um, just to knock those corners off. But having that allowed me to figure out what in the world that angle was of the X-Brace. So I could get something as nice fitting as that. So here is the block that is going to support the top of the guitar that I showed you before and yes I know it's big and it looks like it's bulky as all can be however it was kind of necessary and the reason was because of how wide these had to be this bridge although it is glued on it does have these holes here which had bolts in it so obviously there's not much room in here to do this operation so I really needed to use these holes um, you can see they're countersunk a little bit more they're larger so that it can accommodate the heads of these screws here one other thing I want to add is I put some feeler gauges under there and a straight edge and you can see where the gap is on each side. And those feeler gauges are stacked up at about 123 thousandths. So it's roughly around an eighth of an inch. And uh, we'll see how much flatter I can get that. It's gonna have a lot of pull with 12 strings, obviously. So I wanna flatten that out just a little bit more to kind of help compensate for that extra tension that it's gonna have.
So the heat blanket did a really good job. And once the fingerboard came off, which went very well, um, then I kind of wet the wood a little bit. Well, after cleaning up the glue, um, I wet the wood a little bit, ran an iron on it, and then I clamped it with this piece of poplar, which is dead flat um, on the joiner. And when that happened, I left it dry for like almost a week. And you can see here now, I have a nice straight edge on there and I've got a gap about a uh, relief of about 10 thousands in there. And it's the same on the other side as well. I even did it diagonally and uh, it was still 10 thousands. So um, using the heat blanket, removing the fingerboard, as well as clamping it for about a week, um, really did the trick on this. And so now I can install my new truss rod here and uh, try to get this thing glued up. So I'm about ready to glue up the fingerboard and I have taken all of the twist out of that neck. It still has a little bit of a underbow to it but I'm not worried about it. It's at least even on both sides and I think I can take care of the majority of uh, what's left while gluing up um, the fingerboard to the neck. Everything's all cleaned up cleaned up on the fingerboard and um, there's two little spots you'll notice here little locator pins and there's the other locator pin here um, basically using just side dot material like you see here only in white and I drill a little sixteenth an inch uh, hole in each of these frets here just as locators and so it doesn't swim on me as I'm gluing up so Neck is not twisted, truss rod is reinstalled, and uh, we're ready to glue. So it's out of the clamps, and it's glued up, and my big poplar block here that is dead flat, <coughs> flattened on the joiner, um, really did the trick to keep all of this nice and flat. and. Uh, and I put my straight edge on there. And I know you probably can't really see that very much. You can kind of see a little bit of light under the inlays, but that's why that's where the inlays are a little uh, underneath the surface anyway, just a hair. But it is pretty much dead flat at the moment. Uh, so it looks good to me. And uh, it's a 12 string. Obviously, it's well. It's a guitar, obviously it's going to have a lot of pull in strings, but the 12 string is going to have a little extra pull. So I definitely wanted to make sure that that uh, fingerboard was on there flat. And then when the pull happens, you have enough room that you can adjust that truss rod there. So I'm really happy with the way this has come out so far. One thing about fingerboards though, when you remove a fingerboard, and although I've removed guitar fingerboards before, I actually have the most experience with violin and cello. And the fingerboards are notorious for shrinking a little bit um, once you remove them. And so there's just a little bit of a lip here, little edge that's going to need to be flushed up. And then I'll have to take just a little bit of touch up on that. Um, but as soon as the fretboard come off, that's kind of what happened. And so just a little touch up and uh, should be good but next thing is uh, to get this thing fretted you still have to prep the fretboard itself before you actually put the finger uh, the uh, frets in so I use you know the trusty Stuart McDonald block um, but in this case it was a little bit weird because this was actually kind of a compound radius and I don't think that was intentional I think it was probably an accident um, but you actually had a 10 inch radius about here. Once you got to about the 12th fret on, it flattened out to about a 12. The one cool thing about this neck being bolt on the way it is, it becomes more of like an electric neck than 
uh, dealing with an acoustic neck. So I was able to use my drill press and my uh, little pressing shoe to press these frets in once I cut the tangs off of the, uh, the frets because of the binding. Um, but the frets went in beautifully and uh, the fret slots were certainly deep enough, uh, wide enough that they pressed in nice and easy. And I kind of had to, I tried to backlight this a little bit and it's a notch straight edge so you can see it over top of the frets and there's light coming through there but where the straight edge is contacting the fingerboard that is still dead flat so this has gone really well to this point I'm very happy here is my final installment of this Epiphone 12 string a very unique little piece mostly because of this bolt-on type of a neck um, to recap all that was wrong with it um, the neck had a real bad twist in it um, so what I had to do to that was do a little heat pressing to which I decided that taking the fingerboard off would eventually be the best um, possibility for success and that is exactly what happened so taking all the frets out removed the fingerboard allowed me to just kind of release all that tension that was uh, you know kind of damaging the neck as it was and then by doing that I was able to heat press with a little bit of steam the neck hold it in clamps keep it straight and then from that point on I can clean it up and uh, reattach the fingerboard uh, which again taking the fingerboard off removing all those frets left it completely stress-free and yeah it actually worked really well so that was uh, a definite step in the right direction for this guitar but I also did my version of the uh, bridge doctor which Stu Max sells you can probably see underneath there where I have a little adjusting bolt there for the bridge doctor um, also underneath here you had a neck block that was completely separated uh, from the top so every time the guitar would be tuned to pitch and that pull goes up this way well it would move the the top as well and that block in there and it just it was it was in bad shape So you also have the upper face brace here, excuse me, and across here that also needed some re-gluing. Now it's in pretty solid condition. It's been a couple of days and it's been tuned to pitch and uh, plays pretty darn well. New fret job, the whole bit. So it worked.